forecast for Tuesday, October 15th. So we have the moon in Pisces here all day. We will be seeing the moon in Pisces go void, of course, at 4.01 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking into Aries energy at 4.35 p.m., which essentially is going to throw us into the full moon window. Of course, we are going to have the full moon in Aries pop off on October 17th in the later degrees of Aries. But as soon as we dip our toe into this particular energy, we're definitely going to start feeling that intensity, that boiling point, that emotional awareness, if you will. And over the next couple of days, we're definitely going to have a lot of illumination on a particular topic and theme, especially where the old self is concerned, that we have to kind of bring to a certain closure, bring to a certain end. So with all of that being said, we do have a little bit of a busy day here today. There are 12 different aspects popping off. 10 of those aspects are going to involve the moon. So the moon still in this Pisces energy, again, helping us to wrap up an emotional window, helping us to wrap up some realizations that again, looking back over this last month, we are definitely putting into perspective that moon in Pisces definitely makes us a little bit more hypersensitive than usual. We are connected to our intuition and we are definitely living more into la la land than normal. The moon in Pisces is going to make a positive interaction with Chiron on the wounded healer, who of course is retrograde in Aries energy. Now this is going to help us kind of see where it is that we are putting some wounds, some pain, some trauma behind us, where it is that we have grown, where it is that we have healed and where it is that because of this new illumination, because of this new perspective, we're starting to see different details, different areas of our new version of self that again, we need to kind of strengthen. We need to grow upon. We definitely need to give a little bit more time, energy, and attention to. The moon is going to get into the boxing ring and square off with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings, who of course is now retrograde in Gemini energy. So Pisces energy, Gemini energy, they're both mutable signs, thus why we're getting into the square. This is going to highlight the tension and the conflict that we're currently experiencing while going through some growing pains. Because Jupiter is retrograde in Gemini energy, again, taking the energy internally, we are definitely pushing the boundaries with what it is that we thought we knew. What it is that, again, we need to kind of learn where it is that we have the challenge, our thoughts, our ideas, our opinions. And because the moon is our emotions and Jupiter wants us to take the tough love life lessons that we've already learned and integrate it in this present moment, we're going to be illuminated to where it is that, again, we do have opportunities to grow, to heal, to kind of, again, integrate some of those life lessons into the present moment. But part of us is avoiding doing that process, again, projecting ourselves so far into the future, contemplating and debating between new options and new opportunities when, again, we're in a closure cycle. We should be looking at where it is that we're already at, where it is that we have the ability to grow, expand, learn, kind of challenge our mental plane, instead of forcing this new path, this new idea, these new options. So of course, if this was a positive interaction, we'd get a little bit of optimism, we get a little bit of confidence. Those particular aspects are kind of dwindling, waning, if you will, because of the retrograde energy. So again, we're going to be magnified on where it is that again, we have to test our mental capabilities and kind of allow our intuition, that Pisces energy, to meet our our mental plane, our intellect halfway. The moon is then going to try and beautiful interaction with Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger. Mars is in cancer energy, but he's not very happy to be in because he can't take direct action. He can't take the moves that he wants to make to initiate something new. We're in preservation mode. We are kind of defensive. We are fighting, defending, protecting what it is that we've already built, already created, what it is that we truly value. This is a trine, though, which means that we're working with like-minded elements, which means that this water energy is very purifying, very cleansing, putting us in a situation to now see where a creative solution, a new inspiration, a new idea is kind of triggering and activating us to get hell bent, damn well, and determined to see a particular action through. 
a lot of these actions are the emotional realm actions that we need to take to reframe where it is that the loose ends of the past are still kind of confusing us, still kind of creating this element of chaos within us. And of course, once we clear that gunk out of the way, we can get hyper focused on the situations, the circumstances, the topics and themes that we're actually passionate about, that we actually want to preserve, that we actually want to protect and continue to build upon. The moon in Pisces energy going to make a very harsh interaction with the sun in Libra energy. And of course, we are nearing the final degrees of this Libra season. And therefore, we are starting to see where it is that again, life still has a little bit of a tilt on it, pushing us into one area topic and theme over the other in order to come to a certain term of acceptance, come to a peaceful point of realizing what we actually have power and control over especially where relationship dynamics are concerned, where negotiation and compromise is concerned so that we can restore the peace, the harmony, the balance, not only within ourselves, not only within our physical realm, but within some relationship dynamics that, of course, have popped off as of late. But of course, anytime that the sun and the moon are coming together, there's going to be an aha moment, an emotional awareness of sorts of what we have to leave behind, Pisces energy, emotionally speaking, and where it is that, again, we have to challenge our mental plane, air energy, Libra, in order to find peace and harmony between our heart and our head, between the past and the now, especially in comparison to this futuristic vision, goal, dream that we're starting to conjure up. So we're definitely realizing where it is that we actively have to continue to push those scales until we find a sweet spot between what it is that we're letting go of and what it is that now we're initiating in order to balance those particular scales. Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in the Scorpio energy is going to make a positive interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer who is retrograde in Aries energy. This is definitely going to put us in a totally different perspective, especially when we're analyzing ourselves, analyzing where it is deep in our psyche. There's still seeds of fear, doubts, and insecurities, especially holding this new version of self back. Now, again, this is a positive interaction, so there is going to be some growth. There is going to be some healing here by getting down to the nitty gritty, getting down to the truth, to the matter of fact of situation, circumstances, and heart matters. We are seeing the ability to change, to transform. That's what that Scorpio energy does, especially in the areas of bringing this new version of self online. The moon in Pisces, then going to sextile, beautiful interaction with Uranus, the great awakener, who is retrograde in Taurus energy. We love Pisces and Taurus energy working together because whatever it is that we can imagine, whatever it is that we can dream, whatever it is that we can fantasize, we have an option and an opportunity to bring it to life, bring it into the physical form through the Taurus energy. Just a reminder, though, Uranus being retrograde in this Taurus energy is supposed to be highlighting where it is that we're holding on to the old, where it is that we're resisting the changes that we know that we need to make in order to clear away from the path that we once built, that we once created and create a space, clean the slate for us to build something new in the place of the things that we're no longer in alignment with, that we no longer are growing from. So the moon and Uranus coming together in this way is going to spark off an epiphany, an aha moment of sorts on where it is that, again, the Pisces energy needs us to emotionally let go, release, come to a certain term of acceptance to close the door on the emotions that have us still living in the past, still holding on to people, places, and things that the old version of self had once built, had once created. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Mercury. Mercury, of course, now in Scorpio energy, we have the detective hats on. We're blending our intellect with our intuition. We're reading between the lines. We are bringing things up in order to break things down, in order to have the details, the information available to us that we need in order to change our mind, in order to challenge our ideas, in order to ask the right questions from the people from the world around us. So of course, the moon is our heart space. Mercury is our head space. They're getting along. They're both in water signs and water energy, again, is going to bring a huge wave of intuitive insight into our awareness. It's going to show us where, again, there are 
emotions that we are sorting through, that we are processing at a very accelerated rate. There are epiphanies, ideas, old memories, old narratives that we are processing at a highly accelerated rate in order for us to put a lot of those pieces, a lot of those parts of the old version of self behind us. The moon in Pisces then going to trine beautiful interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. Again, in the Scorpio energy, this is water on water action. A trine is growth. It is a nudge in the right direction. It is showing us where it is that again, we have a little bit of grace, a little bit of ease to make a particular transformation. What is the transformation you may ask? Well, it's taking place in our heart space, especially where relationship dynamics are concerned. Venus being in the Scorpio energy, doing the shadow work, doing all that she can to realize where it is that she's had a change of heart, where it is that she has to kind of release the heaviness, the weight of the old version of self, of the old aspects, the old topics and themes that that old version of self has created in order to free up the space, to have new passions, to have new desires, to actually put herself in a path, in an alignment with what it is now that she wants to actually go after. So of course, the moon in Pisces, again, kind of realizing where where a release is needed, where an ending of a chapter is needed, this particular energy is going to be very helpful for us to kind of release, let go, purge those heavier emotions, those heavier weights that we've been carrying in our heart space that constantly has us reacting out of the old version of self. The moon in Pisces is going to come up to bump into team up with Neptune. Neptune, of course, retrograde in this Pisces energy in its rulership. A conjunction is just as much of an ending as it is a beginning. And what we're ending here is a lot of the heaviness of the emotional weight that we've been carrying, a lot of the stagnancy that we feel very stuck in, a lot of the overwhelming topics and themes, details that we've been kind of, again, suffocating under, let's call it the confusion, the delusion that we have very much been in a state of paralysis over. The new is a new sense of self, a new kind of refreshed, renewed soul and spirit, a renewed sense of hope, of faith, of trust that we're actually in the right place at the right time, doing what we need to do in order to, again, close the door on the past and be prepared to walk through the door when it opens up into the future. The moon in Pisces going to sextile beautiful interaction with Pluto, the great transformer himself, who is now direct in Capricorn energy. This tells us that the moon is at the final degrees of this Pisces energy because Pluto is at the final degrees of Capricorn energy. We love water and earth working together because when you water earth, something grows. And because the moon in Pisces energy is refreshing and renewing our soul and our spirit, refreshing and renewing our hope and our faith. The Plutonian energy, which is very intense, is an empowerment energy. So now we're bossing up. We're realizing what we actually have power and authority over as far as controlling our physical realm. And again, just a reminder, Pluto now direct in this Capricorn energy until November 19th is the final hurrah, the clean sweep, if we will that we have the opportunity to do in order to completely destroy, demolish, and remove the structures, the aspects, the topics, and themes of the old world that, again, have us very blocked, very restricted. So there is going to be an emotional empowerment where we're bossing up, where we actually feel capable of doing the hard things, which is putting a lot of those emotions in the past where it belongs. This is the particular point in time, 4.01 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that the moon goes void, of course. We lock in to Aries energy at 4.35 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And again, the moon in Aries is a fresh start. It's a clean slate. It is a cardinal energy, which is prepared and ready to initiate something new. And in Aries energy, a fire sign, we are ready to take action. We're ready to take moves in order for a forward movement to actually take place. This is a lot of restlessness, a lot of ants in our pants. We have to find a healthy channel to kind of let some of this excess energy out. We just want to kind of put the past behind us. We want to rip that rear view mirror off and we want to focus on what we have the power and control over to take action upon in this present moment to help us align with futuristic inspirations, passions, desires, and dreams. 
8.49 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in the Scorpio energy is going to trine, which is a beautiful interaction with Neptune, who is retrograde in Pisces energy. Neptune is actually the higher form of Venus, meaning we have to move into our intuition, move into that imagination, fantasy type of space in our mind's eye, in our heart space to conjure up some creative solutions, some vision, some goals, some dreams. And we're able to bring it to life when we tap into that Venus energy because Venus, she rules over the physical form. She is the portal that brings ideas and slash people into this physical form. It's where we take something intangible and bring it into the tangible. So Venus trining Neptune is going to be a beautiful energy. First of all, it is going to make us hypersensitive. So watch out for sentimentality. Not that that's a bad thing. Just know that you're probably easily able to get emotional at things that probably wouldn't move you in any other context. There is this sense of empathy, the sense of compassion, the sense of understanding. We start to kind of orient to the beautiful things in life, to where it is that we are feeling a renewed sense of faith, of hope, of trust, especially in the greater, grander plan. And in some cases, because Venus is involved, relationships, relationships may surprise us, especially coming out of, you know, Venus opposing, sitting across from Uranus here yesterday, kind of triggering an unexpected event, either in emotions or in our physical realm to help put things in perspective. Now it's come almost like we are orienting to the silver linings. We're starting to see the best in a situation, the best in ourselves, the best in other people. It's kind of taking the pressure off where there has been conflict in personal relationships. We do have to watch out for the element of confusion and delusion, though. It's almost like we put those rose colored glasses on and we refuse to take a look at anything that is harsh, that is abrupt, that is ugly, that is complicated. We're definitely putting a lot of energy and just focusing on the good. Now, that's not a bad thing. I'm just saying that there's going to be a major shift in Delulu land because Delulu land right now is a lot happier place to be living in than some current realities. This is definitely going to be easier to tap into some spiritual wisdom, some intuition, some downloads, if you will. And we're just starting to kind of reprioritize what peace and happiness and harmony actually means to us, where it is that we could make changes either in our inner realm or in our physical realm in order to stabilize the emotional disruption that many of us have been feeling since eclipse season. And so it's just a very, again, we're talking about water energy. It's just a very calm, peaceful state of emotions. It's very cleansing. It's very positive. And of course, because the Scorpio energy that Venus is in is kind of pushing for a major change and a major transformation, especially where our heart space is concerned, this is going to be the point in time where you're definitely going to start realizing that the heaviness, the weight, the funk is definitely dissipating. So the last thing that we have going on here today is the moon now in this Aries energy, making a very harsh interaction with Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, who, of course, is in Scorpio energy. Now, fun fact, Aries energy and Scorpio energy, they share a common ruler. Mars is the primary ruler over Aries energy, and Mars is the co-ruler over Scorpio energy. So there's always a little bit of an intensity, a little bit of an aggression here, of a little bit of a likeliness that there's going to be some restlessness, some ants in our pants definitely come up. We also have to consider the fact that Mars being in the Cancer energy is very defensive, very protective. We could likely feel some of those particular aspects pop off within us as well. The moon being our heart space, again, very eager, restless, semi excited, semi inspired to take action to make moves, even though there's not a whole lot of action and moves to be made right now. We have Mercury ruler of the mental plane, they're not on the same page, mostly because Mercury and Scorpio energy knows that there's a lot of d details, there's a lot of, I'm going to call it research, a lot of exploration, a lot of resolution that still needs to come out of the past, like what we're trying to put behind us. When Aries over here doesn't care about any of that, we just want to take action to make moves to see some progress in a new path, in a new direction. 
So the disconnect here or the growing pain here is that Mercury in Scorpio energy needs us to be dissecting the situations, the circumstances of the past in order to bring a full awareness to our mental and emotional realm so that we can get in alignment so that we can release it, we can let it go. And the moon over here in Aries energy just rearing to go any direction other than the past. So our heart space definitely wanting to push forward, to push through, to push on, and our head space not really prepared to do that as of yet until we make sense of a lot of situations and circumstances that we're currently sitting in.